I believe that God is a God of androgyny. And by androgyny, I mean the combination of the masculine and feminine energy. See, patriarchy, which is a working of the ego, has gotten us confused that God is a he. This is patriarchy and this is ego. God is a father figure, but not just a father figure, a white man who sits up in some throne. That is not true. God is actually androgynous in God's own nature, male and female, yin and yang combined together. When God is creating, God created everything in God's image, including man, the likeness of God, which means that everything exudes androgyny, everything. This concludes bacteria, trees, plants, animals, everything, including human beings. Everything exudes androgyny to a certain extent. Now, because of the beauty and diversity, not everyone is calibrated equal, right? Some people have more feminine energy. Some people have more masculine energy. The closer you are to that androgyny, the more you exude something totally different. But that and androgyny, that midpoint of androgyny manifests itself in so many different ways. And one of the ways that it manifests itself is through queerness. This is why I believe that queer people are actually gatekeepers. Queer people have the ability to tap into something, something much deeper than physicality. And I'm going to break that down in a bit. Androgyny doesn't always manifest in sexuality though. It can manifest in a heterosexual person. Androgynous being can manifest in a woman, a heterosexual woman, who exudes a lot of masculine energy. The fact that she is a manifestation in physical form of feminine, yet yet exudes masculine energy, categorizes her as a higher level of androgyny. Similarly, there could be a heterosexual man who is truly heterosexual, not bisexual, not even bi-curious, a heterosexual man. However, this heterosexual man exudes a lot of feminine energy. That is also androgyny by default. The fact that him in a physical body manifests as masculine, yet he exudes feminine. That is on that spectrum of androgyny. That automatically categorizes him as a being that exudes a lot of androgyny. The closer you are to that high androgyny, the more different you are. Sexuality just happens to be one of the ways that it manifests itself. Again, it's not always manifested in queerness. The reason why I say this is people who are higher on that androgynous being or that combination of masculine and feminine energy, these people are gatekeepers in my opinion. Think about it. Every single woman, literally every single woman who has made a boss move, whether it's Michelle Obama, whether it's uh, Condoleezza Rice, whether it's uh, Olivia Pope, fictional character, whether it's Hillary Clinton, whether it's Nicki Minaj, doesn't matter whether you like these people or not. My point is every single woman, every single woman that we know who has made a name for themselves, who has commanded respect, has always been a woman with high masculine energy. The masculine energy, like I've mentioned before, is the doer. This is the one who takes charge. These women have always been boss. So a woman who exudes a lot of feminine energy will be a woman who is not really a doer. This will be a woman that you wouldn't really hear much of. You know, you may say she's polite or nice or cute and things like that. She will be high on thinking and emotions and creativity and things like that. But she's not really someone who takes boss moves. A lot of times when these type of women make a name for themselves, it's usually because they have made a name for themselves because of the people they surround themselves around. And those people they surround themselves around maybe a spouse or people that they've hired or people who exude a lot of masculine energy but these women that i'm talking about who exude masculine energy on their own these are boss women this is because that androgynous spirit is a spirit of gatekeeping similarly when you think about all the men who we know of who are bosses you know who have made a name for themselves these are men who also exude the spirit of androgyny whether it's a person you like or you don't like whether it's obama bill clinton whether it's martin luther king whether it's uh, Donald Trump, it doesn't matter. These people exude a spirit of androgyny. It doesn't even matter in their sexuality. Androgyny in their physical male manifestation and in their high feminine energy that they exude in the form of intellect. Again, I've mentioned this before. The feminine energy is the intellect, is the thinker, is the planner. These people are people who are very, very intentional, very intelligent, and they have the ability to also execute, hence why that masculine energy. This combination is very special. Now, the very special thing about queer people is the fact that this androgyny is so powerful that it manifests itself physically and sexuality. Ever since I started seeking the truth for myself without conforming to the malarkey that the word has taught me, I have come to see truly, truly, there's something extremely special about queer people. I believe queer people have the ability to tap into heaven. Again, don't get too hooked on the word 
or the words that I'm using, heaven, for example, because I know a lot of those words have been corrupted so much because of extreme religiosity as a result of organized religion. Heaven here, or like the Buddhists will call it, nirvana, is the purity of what is beyond this phenomenological existence. Heaven is truly what is existence within the dot of everything beyond human existence, if that makes sense. This heaven is timeless, it's pure, it's formless. It is the embodiment and the epitome of goodness. And I believe that gatekeeping as manifested through queer people is one of the ways that this reality of humanity is being blessed by the dot of everything, blessing this realm with the gatekeeping keepers, the queer people. These people have the ability to tap into something much deeper. Now, in this realm, this heaven manifests itself through queer people in so many different ways. I remember back a few years ago when I was in college, someone made a comment loosely that gay people are very intelligent, always seem to be intelligent. The interesting thing is I've kind of dismissively thought about that in the past until this person mentioned this and I started thinking about it. You know what? There is some type of validation there. Queer people exude something different. When you think about it, queer people always seem to have a touch of something different in everything. This is that heaven manifesting itself in the now, in the human reality. This is why it is very common for you to see a lot of queer people in art, in music, in fashion, in poetry, in creativity, uh, in photography, in acting, anything that has to do with creativity. This is also why a lot of queer people are very compassionate. A lot of queer people seem to be very emotionally intelligent. They're very relatable to this is also why a lot of women naturally gravitate towards gay men because of that sink in feminine energy which that feminine energy is the thinker the nurturer the birther and the fact that this manifests itself in androgyny is what makes it very special but going back to the ego the ego knows this the ego knows that queer people are actually gifts to humanity yes I know it sounds biased for me to say because I'm a queer person, but I believe this in the depths of my soul. The ego understands that queer people are actually, truly, truly blessings to this place. Imagine what this world would be if there weren't gay people or queer people in general. Just imagine, imagine what Hollywood would look like. Imagine our movies or our, our sense of fashion. Imagine the creativity that will be lost forever. Imagine all of the things that will be lost forever. And these are just from the queer people that we think we know. Imagine all the queer people who have contributed to so much, but they're in the closet. Imagine if there were no queer people. I can even begin to imagine what this life would look like. This place would be boring, very boring. That's because queer people are the gatekeepers to connect this realm of reality with the rest of everything else that is encased within the dot of everything. But again, like I said, the ego knows this and the ego seeks to divide and conquer. When you think about what an ideal man is, according to society, this ideal man is basically the oh, oh, you know, bro oh, oh, type of dude, the meathead, you know, he is one who manifests a lot of masculine energy, but no feminine energy. And this is what patriarchy does. Patriarchy gets men to kill their feminine energy and gets women to kill their masculine energy. Patriarchy tells men that it is wrong for you to have emotions, to talk about your feelings, to go for therapy. It's wrong for you to be intentional. As a man, you don't need to learn how to cook. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. You don't need to play with colors. You don't need any of that. All you have to do is just be a rugged oh, man at all times. This is actually a lie. Think about a heterosexual man. A heterosexual man who exudes mostly masculine energy. Again, it would be impossible for you to exist if you don't have masculine and feminine energy. But this will be someone who exudes like, let's say, 95% masculine energy and 5% feminine energy. That lack of balance is actually a form of handicap. This will be a bro type of situation, right? Maybe a guy who works out, he looks good, you know, he's very tall, muscular, you know, the type of dude that would do jackass type of stuff that would do without really thinking. This will be a dumb diddy dumb man, a man who has no intellect whatsoever. He looks the part. He wouldn't have the problem doing anything dumb because there's no intellect whatsoever. But he's a man. He's a real man, but does a lot of dumb shit. This, unfortunately, is the idea that patriarchy tries to get us to embrace by telling you that as a man, you need to extinguish your feminine energy. But the truth is that every single one of us, we have been perfectly calibrated to manifest androgyny to a certain extent. Yes, yeah, some people have more feminine energy irrespective of gender. Some people have more masculine energy irrespective of of gender and also irrespective of your sexuality. However, you have been perfectly calibrated to have 
what you have. So if you're a man, for example, whether it's heterosexual or a queer man who exudes both masculine and feminine energy, patriarchy tells you that to be a real man, you need to clip your feminine energy. This will be equivalent to being born with two legs and someone convinces you that to be a real man, you have to cut off one of your legs. So you are handicapping yourself by yourself because of the workings of the ego. Again, think about that guy that I mentioned, the heterosexual man who exudes significantly more masculine energy than feminine energy. This is someone who would be quote unquote considered born handicapped born disabled, spiritually disabled, so to speak. But this is not necessarily because there's anything wrong with that person. The thought of everything has manifested them like that because they fulfill a purpose in this being. There will always be special people amongst us and we shouldn't laugh at them. We shouldn't make fun of them, right? Because it is what it is. But you though, a man, whether you're heterosexual or queer, you have been perfectly calibrated in your own masculine and feminine energy and you given into the teachings of the ego to clip your feminine energy because the ego has convinced you that to be a real man the feminine energy has to go this is you deliberately handicapping yourself matter of fact to paint you a better picture it will be less painful for you to wake up in the morning go to your kitchen grab a kitchen knife and slash your arm every single day because the damage that you're doing to yourself will be physical if you were to slash your hand compared to what you're doing with yourself spiritually you are tainting your own spirit by handicapping your spiritual calibration of androgyny and again people who are queer have a higher dose of this androgyny androgyny is gatekeeping this is a gift to humanity this would be someone who is a prophet but not necessarily prophet in the way we think as you know preached by organized religion but prophet as in someone who has the ability to see something that a lot of people don't necessarily see whether it's in pattern whether it's in colors whether it's in organization whether it's in numbers this is androgyny this is irrespective of your gender and irrespective of your sexual orientation it is a gift and queer people have a higher dose of it. Likewise, a woman who exudes a lot more feminine energy but very little masculine energy, that would also be a form of handicap. But again, just like the man who exudes a lot of masculine energy, there's nothing necessarily wrong with this woman. That is just her purpose as she has manifested. This will be a woman who would possibly match with a man who has a lot of masculine energy and together they will have a more airtight calibration together. So for example, this could be a woman who enjoys being a stay-at-home mom. You know, she likes to cook, she likes to plan, she likes to clean, she likes to take care of the kids at home. That is just her comfort zone. Anything that has to do with you know, maybe paying the bills, mowing the lawn, going to work, that just gives her anxiety. It's not really her thing. And then you have the man who is the doer. He's a worker. He goes out there to make money and then he comes home and provides for the family. But when it comes to anything that has to do with planning, he gives it to the wife because he knows, oh yeah, you know what? She's good with the numbers. She's good with the paperwork. She's good with this and this and that. And both of them complete each other. But when it comes to androgyny, I'm talking about people who manifest both masculine and feminine energy and queer people have a huge advantage because it is so heavy that it manifests itself even in your physicality as queerness. You are perfect as a queer person. I think it makes my soul cry so much when I see so many people who are in the closet. You are made of diamond, like you have no idea. You are gold, you are diamond, you are a precious stone. But in a world that is so dead in spirit, someone is convincing you that you are the weirdo, you are the problem. So much so that you hide your own glistering and shininess. You hide your own power. The power of a, a gem, the power of a diamond, the power of, of gold. This world is so dead in spirit that you have been convinced to reduce yourself from diamond to dust. So much so that you're ashamed of who you are. You are power. You are the gatekeeper to the infinite. You are the gatekeeper to nirvana. You are the gatekeeper to heaven. You are a blessing to this realm. Without you, this realm will be dead. You are what these people need. You are a gift to humanity. You have been blessed with a higher calibration of androgyny. Tap into it and bless this realm with infinity. It lives within you.